Amen. Welcome to church today, church fam. We're glad you're here. Why don't y'all sit down today? Come on, let's jump into it. I want to talk for a few minutes on decisions, on choices. We started two weeks ago a, a little mini series. We're quickly just talking about choices. Two weeks ago, I had a little fire, rocks. It's talking about the rocks that we got to put in our life to control our lives, to contain our lives, to allow our lives to burn in a healthy way. I gave us five things that we have to do. Today, I'm going to talk about some things that I really want us to not do, to, 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 to have some restraint, some limitations in our life. I really want to talk about uh, some hard choices today, the hard decisions in our life. Have you ever made a choice? I think we could all relate to this. And you were unwilling to make the hard choice, and then for days or weeks or months or maybe even for some of us years, you lived with the regret and the repercussion of your unwillingness to make the hard choice? Anyone in here ever unfortunately had a moment like that? You're unwilling to make the hard choice, and so you live with the regret of it for days or weeks or months or some of us years. We gotta make some hard choices. We gotta live in some hard choices. We have to be willing today to do what it takes to pay the price, to count the cost, so that we can live the life that God wants us to live. Let's talk about some hard choices today. I think many of us, uh, because God gave us choice, and, and what a gift he gave us. Many of us, though, live in the world of choice, and we want say over the area God, God didn't give us say in. Here's what we want. Here's what we're struggling with. What do I got? I got some seeds up here. Too many of us, I like these. Too many of us want to define what grows, but are unwilling to take responsibility for what's planted. What does that mean? It means I want to decide or define or set the limitations on what I receive, but I'm unwilling to, to define or take responsibility for what I plant. I want to decide, let me say it this way. I got some watermelon here. I love a good watermelon. Oh, it's delicious. When it's hot outside, a barbecue, a family get together. I want to, what happens if I have watermelon seed and then I plant watermelon seed, but then I pray for apples? What if I want apples, like really bad? What if I deserve apples? What if because you have apples, I want apples? God, you should give me apples because you gave them apples. God, don't I deserve apples? Don't, shouldn't I have the desires of my heart? I really want apples. God, I'll pray for apples. God, help me get apples. God, I'll fast for apples. But, but I'm over here planting watermelon. What if I just keep planting watermelon seed, hoping for apples? See, many of us in our life are doing that. We're planting seed, but then we're trying to define what that seed should grow. What if we're like, God, I know I planted watermelon, but I really just want jalapenos. I mean, I know I, know I planted watermelon, but... What would it take? If you, if you loved me, you'd give me peppers. If you loved me, God, you'd answer my prayers. And God's like, well, why'd you plant watermelon hoping for peppers? How come you planted anger and are hoping for kindness? How come you planted waste and are hoping for blessing? How come you planted, see, Many of us, can I get real with us? Many of us, we struggle in our relationships because we're unwilling to pay the price of real friendship. Iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens. We're unwilling to have friends that sharpen us, but when we're in a tough moment, we want everyone to show up for us. 
But we struggle showing up for them. We, we struggle being there at midnight, helping the marriage, counseling them. We struggle show, like we're just, like we want to define the fruit, but we're unwilling to take the responsibility of the seed. Many of us, want, and God's like, no, 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 no. I gave you authority. I gave you control of the seed portion, but not the fruit portion. The fruit is not up to you. The seed is up to you. Can I make this bigger? Many of us want to decide what happens after we have sex. See, the choice is when you have sex. That's the choice. The opposite of life isn't choice, it's death. It's not, the, the, it's not life and choice, it's life and death. And many of us in our culture today are arguing over the fruit, but we're not willing to look at the seed. And in our friendships, we're arguing over uh, how people are kinder. And in our workplace, we're arguing over what we're entitled and what we're owed. And No, 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 no. What if we had responsibility over our seed and stopped arguing over our fruit? But that person has more fruit. Well, they, maybe they planted more seed. And I met, I moved, when I moved to Birmingham years ago, and I was in a tough season, a tough, tough, tough season with my family, and I'd, I'd gone through some struggles and some mistakes, and I remember moving there, and my pastor there, who is still my pastor today, Pastor Chris Hodges, he said, listen, okay, uh, I, can't, I can't nullify your past choices and decisions. I can't get rid of the harvest that you, that you have, but I can help you plant more seed. I can help you plant new seed. See, many of us are resentful of the harvest that we have. We're resentful of the re re relationships, of where our marriage is. We're resentful of our income. We're resentful of our debt. We're resentful, of, and we feel like everyone else has solved the problem, and we're mad about the fruit, but that's not the part of the equation we have authority over. We have authority over the seed. And so too many of us keep planting watermelons and we're getting mad that God's not giving us jalapenos. We're like, I could make some great sauce up in here, God, if you would just give me some pepper. And he's like, well, plant it. Plant it. But too many of us, we want to define the fruit, not the seed. And so we leave our friendships because they're not healthy and they're not challenging. And we quit our jobs and we move to different states and we stop talking to our families and we feel entitled and we abort and we bail and we quit. And all because we want to define our fruit but are unwilling to own our seed. Real quiet in here right now, Mom. No. It was okay. It was really quiet the first two services, too. You got to own your part in the process. You want kindness? Sow it. You want peace? Sow it. You want generosity? Sow it. You want great friendships? So it. You, men, if you, want, if you want your marriage to get healthier, sow healthy seed into your marriage. Stop complaining about the fruit and own some seed. You want to help your children? You want to be a better at your work? You want to have a better business? You want to have, like, it, whatever it is that you're focused on, focus on the part of the equation you have authority over. And it's the seed that you sow. The other part of the equation that we have a choice in, we have a choice in the seed we sow, and we have a choice in what we do with what grows. See, we have a choice in the seed, and we have a choice in the fruit, but we don't get to define what grows. I can't plant apples and hope for oranges. I can't plant anger and hope for joy. But I do get a say in what I do with what grew. Can I say it this way? God grows trees, I make tables. God grows trees. You, God is not gonna build your business. He's gonna grow trees and you're gonna build a business. 
He'll, tr- he'll grow trees and you're gonna go to school and you're gonna make the investment and you're gonna hire the person and you're gonna mentor the person and you're gonna develop the person and you're gonna, like God grows the ability. God grows the seed, but you build the table. And too many of us are like, well, if God wanted me to have it, he would do it. If God wanted to bless me, he'd bless me. If God wanted me to have a business, if God, if God wanted you to have a degree, is it just gonna show up in your mailbox? You're just gonna wake up one day like the Matrix and you're just like a surgeon. You're like, oh wow, God wanted me to be a surgeon. I just downloaded how to do surgery. No, God gave you the ability, but it's in seed form. Now that has to grow and develop and be cultivated and then you have to put it to work. God grows trees. We build tables. We build with what God grows. God is not gonna do the whole thing. And many of us get stuck and we're bitter or resentful or we blame or we get angry over defining the fruit. And that's the one place in the equation that we have no authority over. But we do have choice in the seed we plant and the tables we build. So we got to own it. Hard choice. Hard choice one is what's the seed that I've been planting in my life? What's the seeds that I'm lacking? What's the things that are missing in my life? Complaining about it won't help it grow. Being upset about it won't, here, can I say, deserving it won't help it grow. God wanting me to have it won't help it grow. No matter how much God wants me to have it, no matter how much I've earned it or deserve it or I'm entitled, no matter how bad my family is, no matter how far, like all of these things, and I wish you could be more blessed. I wish I could give it to you. But no matter how much, we, it's just, nope, you gotta plant the seed, grow the seed. I wish I could change your harvest sometimes. I wish I could help you. I wish I could make it. I wish I could plant for you. But God says, no, no, no. Actually, in, in uh, Galatians 6, 7, read this. It says, don't be misled. You cannot mock God. You will always harvest what you plant. Don't be misled. You're going to reap what you sow. You're going to harvest what you plant. And many of us are running from relationships, running from family members, running from marriages, leaving workplaces, leaving. We're just out. Why? Because we're trying to avoid the harvest that we planted. We're trying to sidestep the fruit that we grew. But don't be misled. God, God's not mocked. What you sow, what you plant, that's why I love my, my pastor goes, listen, Caleb, I can't, I can't void the harvest that you grew. You made some bad decisions. We're going to navigate through it, but we will get through it. But let's plant some new seed. See, too many of us have stayed in a bad season as if that's the only season you could ever have. Plant some new seed. Man, my marriage is bad. Plant some new seed. Well, my kid's struggling. Plant some new seed. I don't have enough money. Plant some new seed. I'm struggling with my friendships. Get some, like plant something new. Too many of us are willing to stay in a bad season. And we complain about it. We gripe about it. Maybe we should plant some new. See, the tough choice is many of us are looking at other people to plant seed, but it's on me to plant the life that God wants me to have. Second second choice. Second choice. Hard choices. This isn't easy. This isn't easy. It's not easy to harvest bad harvests. It's not easy to realize that my marriage is where it is because of me. It's not easy to realize my finances where they are because of me. No one else snuck in and spent my money on Amazon. That was a me choice. Or my wife. It is what it is. Okay, but it is what it is. Two became one, so I guess it's us together. <laughs> second choice is, first off, where's your seed? The second is, where's your line? Where's your line? Where's your line in life? If, have you ever seen guardrails when you're driving? You know what I'm talking about? Big old guardrails keeping you safe from cliffs. 
Where do they put the guardrail? It's not just random. It's not just like, this would be a good spot for a guard. No, they put it in front of a cliff. They put it in front of other cars. They put it in front of other, why? Because if you went over or through that area, that line, that guardrail, there's some real danger on the other side. Have you ever realized that they have to put the guardrail in the safety zone to stop you from getting to the danger zone? They have to give up safe space of the road to keep you from the danger space in the road. Many of us are unwilling to give up our safe space to stop us from danger zones. Oh, but that's just, it, that's just stifling. Man, Christianity is all about rules and legalism. and No, I, I'm free in Christ. I, no, 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 no. No, you got to place the line in your life before it gets to a danger area. And many of us are unwilling to give up our space, our life, our room, our choices, our freedom, because, well, I, that's just legalism. That's God's just trying to ruin all my fun. No, he's not trying to ruin your fun. He's trying to keep you from the edge, from the cliff, from dying. Like your car, if it hits a guardrail, is scratched. If there wasn't a guardrail, it's worse. And too many of us are unwilling to draw a line in our life. And how many times do you have to learn that lesson of going over the guardrail? How many times... Have you slipped up and looked at pornography again? How many times have you slipped up and spent too much money again? How many times have you slipped up and gossiped again? How many times have you slipped up and went over the line with your anger again? How many times do we have to do this to ourselves before we're like, maybe... It's got a good idea, just out of nowhere. Just uh, Maybe I should just back away from that line. Maybe I should put a line. Now, here's the deal. Your lines won't always be my lines. And the devil will attempt to use my lines to en- enable your lines. See, like, oh, well, that person doesn't struggle, so I can do it too. No, no, if you struggle with it, then you should draw a line. Some of y'all can't handle social media. It's bad for you. So just because I can doesn't mean you should. Some of y'all can handle wine. Some of y'all can't. Is drinking a sin? It is if you're drunk all the time. Some of you can't handle it. Some of y'all can't handle Netflix. You just shouldn't have a subscription. You can't handle it. Some of y'all can't handle some apps. So, like, you, like, I'm not judging all of us as the broad stroke. I'm saying you draw lines in your life for what God's called you to do. What are your lines? First, first line you gotta draw in your life. I got four lines for us and then we'll roll. Four line. First line, I'm gonna draw a line in my life before temptation. Before temptation, I'm drawing. So what, what tempts you? Where is your temptations? Draw a line. I won't, I, this, this is a line and I will not cross because that's a temptation for me. I can't go there. I, I can't go there. G- Genesis 3 verse 1. I love this. They're going to throw it on the screens. The beginning of this section is titled Temptation and Fall of Man. The devil went with the temptation to trip up Adam and Eve. He tempted them. He said, now the serpent was more cunning than the, any beast in the field which the Lord had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree in the garden? A couple of things that I struggle with in this little verse. One, why is Eve talking to a snake. Why are we doing this, guys? We should, this isn't, don't do that. But I can't go down that rabbit trail today. The second issue is, why is she so close to the tree? Why is Eve next to the tree? Like, she had a whole garden. Go somewhere else, girl. 
Adam's right next to him, he's a little punk. Just right behind his wife, just listening. This d- dude. Oh, weak men. I freaking hate them. I, I don't have many pet peeves, but a, a weak dude leads your family. Just standing behind his wife. What's going to happen? When I started dating Krista, my wife, I remember asking a, a friend of mine, pastor, and I was like, Okay, we're dating. I want to be holy. I want to be right. I don't want to go over the line. We're not going to sleep together. But what can it? Tell me everything that I can do. I want everything. All of it. Anything. Rubs, hugs. Is there a limit on a hug? Like, can I just hug her for like 10 minutes? Uh, or is it seconds? Like, I want, I want to be here. I want to be on that line. Can I give her massages? Like, Therapeutic ones, though, whole body massages. Can, is there a kiss limit? Can we kiss? How long can we kiss? Where can we kiss? Come on, somebody. Can I get an amen from some of you dudes out there that were trying to be holy and date at the same time? You're like, I need everything. Get as detailed as you can for me. Draw it if you can. Diagrams. Step by step it for me. Here's, here's the problem. Living on the line. What happens when there's a moment of weakness and I'm over the line. I'm over the line. See, but then we carry that energy with everything. Most of us in our budgets are month to month. We over the line. We live in I'm not gossiping, I just care about them. And you over the line. And you drinking. It's not an issue. <sighs> you one too many. Now you lost control. And you, you were out of control and you said some stuff you shouldn't have said. You did some stuff you shouldn't have done. That relationship at work, that's not inappropriate. Well, it might not be today, but you are on the line, buddy. <sighs> why, 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 why live so close to the line? Why live so close to being burned? Do you do that in your normal life? Do you just walk skyscrapers on the outside all the time? Do you just walk on the edge of the Grand Canyon? Like, I wonder how close I could get before I fall. No, no. We don't, we don't walk, we're not like, I wonder how close I could get to a fire before it burns me. But with our life, it's like, I just want to live on the line. No. So I will draw a line that says, I will not venture into the danger zone of temptation in my life. I won't go there. And that's different for all of us. So maybe for some of us, it's social media. And that's, that's, that is an app that should not be on your phone. Or that's an app that should have a time limit. For some, it's music. You should not listen to those artists anymore. They sound great. Other people appreciate them. They ain't for you no more. Because it messes with your spirit. It messes with your emotions. It messes with the way you view women or the way you view yourself. And so you should just move the line. Move the line. For some of y'all, you're trying to save money and you still follow like a thousand cars on social media. You're just tempting yourself. I just wish I could get that body kit on my car. I wish I could spend another 80 grand on them rims. What are you, why are you focusing on everything that would push you over your budget? Some of you guys, you follow all them swimsuit accounts. What are you doing? It's not nudity. You're an idiot. (laughs) Just, it's, you know, it's just set the line. If it's a temptation for you, back away. Don't be looking at that stuff that produces greed in you. Don't look at that stuff that produces lust in you. Don't look at that stuff... Let me say this word. What would you want if you didn't know what others had? Right, Bonna? How much would we want if we didn't know what others had? If I didn't know what you had, what would I want? Many of us are just driven by consumerism. We just want more. I didn't even know I wanted that shirt until I saw you have it. 
I didn't know I needed that vacation until you took it. I didn't know that I needed this upgrade until you got it. Like, honestly, I don't think I've needed an iPhone in like 10 years. They've only like added like four lenses. I'm like, new lens. Like, what? I'm not even a photographer. Why do I need more lenses? I just see, all I have is photos of my children. And I also see them in person every day. So I don't know what I need these photos for. But I need the new lens. If I don't have it, I'm less of a person. Consumer. I just need. I need. I need. You know they say that Washington State sells more sunglasses than any other state? (laughs) Why do you need so many sunglasses? What do you, right? Florida should sell more, but there's nothing to block up here. (laughs) Right? What would you want if you didn't know what I had? Because when I know what you have, I know what I don't. And I want it. And I feel entitled to it. And I feel I should have it. And if you have it, why can't I have it? Matthew 6, 24, they're gonna throw it on the screens. The second line you gotta draw in your life. Remember, these are the, the, the rocks were things that I'm gonna actively do. Five things I'm gonna do in my life. These are things that I'm, I'm actively not doing. Matthew 6, 24 says, no one can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now that word mammon is just an old word. It means riches or materialism. You, you just can't. Now, don't, 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 don't turn off on me. Oh, it's the mega church talking about my money. Jesus is, I'm just quoting, okay? So it's not a me issue, it's a him issue. And it's, he talks about money so often because he knows what gets a hold of our hearts the fastest. It's stuff. And it's all different. Because there's a lot of things that you have that wouldn't hold my heart. Games, you're, how, you're, you're, like, there's a lot of stuff that I'm like, oh, that's awesome. I'm so glad that you have that. But that, that's, however, there are, there's stuff in here that I struggle to go, don't let that hold me. Let that go, Caleb. Don't, don't, don't waste your finances. Don't serve mammon. Don't serve things. Don't serve material. No, no, no. My, my heart, my, my life is committed to following God, not the things in my life. And I got to draw a line in my life that says I will not cross over things. Mammon. I'm going to draw a line. I won't, I, I won't serve mammon. I won't serve materials. My budget creates more freedom for me than your debt ever created for you. See, many people think, oh, God is just so religious. He's so rigid in rules and laws and do's and don'ts. Yeah, and his rules and his laws and his do's and don'ts create freedom in my life. I live a freer life than, than people that live without God ever could dream of living. Because I'm free to give. I'm free to serve. I'm free to lay down my life. I'm, I'm free of bondage. I'm free of your debt. I'm free of your, the cares of this world. Uh, like, I can live in freedom because of the limitations that I've accepted. My line produces freedom in my life. And many people are unwilling to make a line in their life, and they keep going over, and it's producing bondage. See, many of us have gone over the line in our finances, and we're living in debt. There's no freedom in that. There's no freedom in your debt. You go over the line in drug use, over the line in drinking. There's no freedom in your drunkenness. I love my dad always says, he got so free they put him in prison. He, was, he, he had so many drugs, he was living as free as he could until he had none. And many of us, although we're not in jail, are living the same way. We're in bondage 
to our freedoms. Oh, I'm, I'm free, preacher. I can do what I want. Yeah, but your, your unwillingness to make a line in your life is leading to bondage. So I will make a line in my life when it comes to my finances. I will not serve mammon. I just won't. I won't serve it. I will create margin. I'm not going to live month to month. If I make five, I don't spend five. If you make 3000 you don't spend 3000 Whatever you make, that's not what you get to spend every month. You, that's just what it is. You have to create margin in your life. Yeah, but that's rules and limitations. No, 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 no. It's creating freedom. It's creating space for me to live. It's creating margin for God to use my life. See, what if God tells me instantly that person needs help, but I have no margin? So I have nothing to give. I have no time to give. I have no talents to give. I have no finance. I can't, I, God is limited in my life because I haven't given room for him to flow. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a line in my life that says I will not spend every dollar I make. I will not spend it on me and mammon and my things. Too many of us are living burdened and enchained to this idea of material. More, more, more. You know what? You should do a, uh, uh, you should do something for yourself, which is what's, what is, what's a blessed life for me? What's blessed to you? And then let God bless you. Not more, because that's not the answer. The answer isn't just more. What, what is it to you? $75,000 a year. This much paid off, this much giving. I could sow this much. I could sponsor uh, five compassion kids a month. Or man, as a household, I wanna make 200. I wanna make a million dollars a year. What is it What is it to you that's blessing for you? Then let God bless you. Don't compare what I want, what he has. I want his car. I want that house. No, 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 what do you, what, what could God bless you with? I love that God told Abraham in the Old Testament, Abraham, look up at the stars. That's what I have for you. He didn't say, hey, Abraham, go look at that king's stuff. Go look at that person's stuff. I'm gonna give it all to you. I'm giving you their, their horse and their chair. No, 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 he said, look to what I have. My blessing comes from the Lord. So for me and my house and my family, this is what a blessed life looks like. It means we could be generous at this level. It means we could operate on our own at this margin. It means we could invest at this level. It means we could create an inheritance for my children and their grandchildren at this level. It means that we could be giving and tithing and, compl- and, f- and easy to give our time away. And that's what blessing to me looks like. What does it look like to you? Because stop comparing yourself to your neighbor and your friend and your old best friend. And no, 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 no. Let God bless you. So I'm going to put a line in my life that says I don't compare myself to you. I don't serve mammon. So I'm not even going to get close to it. I'm not going to get close to the line of greed or things or material. Ephesians 4.31, third line that we got to draw in our own lives. Get rid of all bitterness as well as all types of evil behavior. Get rid of bitterness. Get rid of it. Get rid of bitterness. Get rid of it. It's easier said than done. Come on, somebody. But got to get rid of your bitterness. Instead, be kind to each other. Forgive one another. Forgive one another. Forgive. Forgive. What am I trying to get you to hear? Forgive. Forgive. Forgive one another just as God through Christ has forgiven you. Forgiveness isn't about them, it's for you. You can say, yeah, but they don't deserve to be forgiven. Can I say this to you? They may not deserve to be forgiven, but you don't deserve to carry their weight. Because See, they may not deserve to be forgiven, but you don't deserve to carry their wrong. So when you forgive, it's not saying that they were right. It's not saying they've made it right. It's not saying they've earned your forgiveness. It's saying, I will not live on this side of unforgiveness any longer. I'm letting it go. I'm not going to carry you. You're a bum. You're a jerk. What you did was wrong. The seed that you sowed, you're going to harvest, but I won't live a life in unforgiveness. 
I've drawn a line in my life that says I am someone who just forgives. I am someone who forgives. I'm not gonna be bitter and I'm not gonna be unforgiving. Just that's, that is who I am. That's a line in my life. And, and that border, that wall creates freedom in my life. Could you imagine if you got a custom home built and the builder didn't, didn't do the last wall? You just move in and you're like, bro, there's, there's, three, there's three walls. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a lot, you know, everyone's always complaining that they don't want God to be all stifling and close them. And I'm kind of like that. I, was, I don't want to stifle you either. I wanted you to have some freedom. Don't, I'm not trying to close you in. You're like, no, man, I need that fourth wall. Too many like, God, you're so stifling. He's like, no, 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 no. No, the walls, my parameters, my barriers, they're not to, to close life from you. They're to create freedoms for you. And when we walk in forgiveness, it brings freedom into our life. It doesn't mean they've earned it. Or deserve it. It doesn't mean what you went through wasn't tragic and heartbreaking and wrong. It means that you're not going to live the rest of your life carrying their weight or their wrong or their sin. It's just not for me anymore. I know it hurts. I know it's hard, but I'm going to take a step every day of forgiveness because it's not going to live in my life. I am not walking to the edge of that cliff. How many of us have walked to the edge of that cliff over and over and over and we've allowed that frustration to eat us alive? That hostility, that ang like, and it just keeps growing, and you're right for feeling it because what they did was wrong. But is that really worth living in? But you don't know what they, I agree with they, go punch them, but then move on. I mean, I'm with you. Maybe it was a divorce, maybe it was a longtime friend, maybe it was a parent. A boss, maybe you should have gotten that raise, that promotion. You should have, and you didn't, and it was wrong. But I won't live the rest of my life carrying the weight of living on a cliff. That bitterness, that heartbreak, that no, no, I'm letting that go. I, I, I believe that God will bless me through it. God can help me through it. God will bring me a hundredfold return now in this time. I believe that I will release it. Vengeance is the Lord's. He's got my back. He'll work it out for me. They got a harvest coming. I'm going to let it go. I'll let God do his deal, and I'm going to stay focused on living my life. I'm going to let bitterness go. How much happier and healthier would you be if you said, you know what, I'm not carrying the weight of unforgiveness any longer. That parent, I'm letting it go. That coach, I'm letting it go. That ex-spouse, I'm letting it go. That friend, I'm letting it go. I, I should have. You're right. They should have. You were entitled. You were owed. But I'm letting that weight the last line of banker come onto the stage. Ephesians 5.15. Ephesians 5.15. Go there with me. It says, seek then what, that you walk carefully, not as foolish but as wise, redeeming the time for the days are evil. Walk carefully, not as foolish but as wise, redeeming the time. The last line that I need you to draw in your life is I will... Redeem the time. I say this way, I will use my time with care. Walk carefully. Walk carefully. You know what walking carefully means? You ever walked in a small yard that had a big dog? You know what I'm talking about? You're like, ooh. I'm not stepping in anything today. I'm talking about careful, careful where you step, careful how you live. It says redeem the time. You ever taken a coupon to the grocery store and redeemed it? Anyone ever redeemed a free gift, a free drink here? Any of you? 
I got my free drink up in here. Come on, somebody. I got to redeem this. See, that, that drink didn't chase you down. You had to come get it. You had to redeem the coupon. I have to redeem it. Same as with your time. Use your time. Redeem your time. Spend it wisely. Because if you don't spend it well, someone will. Someone will spend your time. Someone will consume your time. Someone will tell you what to do. Someone will tell you how to vote. Someone will tell you what to care about. Someone will tell you what ladder to climb. Someone will tell you what mountain to take. Someone will tell you the goals of your life. Someone's gonna tell you how to spend your time. But Jesus is saying, redeem your time. Live carefully. Live aware. Know what you're doing with your life. Redeem it. Live your life well. James says that life is but a vapor. Life is but a vapor? It's here today and gone tomorrow. You know, you get what, 80 summers in your life? 90 if you're healthy and lucky? We just spent one about? How did you redeem it? I'm 39. I'm 39 summers through. All right, what do I got, 50 left? 60? How did, I, how did I use my summer? How did I use the time? Don't, I don't get a do-over. I don't get a mulligan. I don't get a, nah, have a, go, have a, next, a new go at that week. You really kind of messed that one up. Let's redo it. No. That's, that's all I got. So, so I have to redeem my time. I got to spend it well. I have to invest it well. What are you doing with the time that God gave you? I'm going to draw a line in my life that I will not spend my life the way that others tell me to. I'm going to redeem my time so that when I get to that beautiful day where I get to stand before my Savior, I will live a life that receives well done, good and faithful servant. Enter to the joy of the Lord. Because I didn't live on the edge of, oh, it's just wasteful. I didn't live just uh, spending my days watching social media, movies, gaming. Like, there are things that are enjoyable, and then there's things that are wasteful. And I will not waste my life. I won't spend it on your success. I won't hope for your marriage. I won't try to have your blessing or your business. No, no, I don't want your hobbies. I want my life to matter to God. And I hope that your life matters the same way to him. But I don't want your blessings. I don't want your hobbies. I don't want to climb your ladder. I want to climb the ladder God called me to climb so when I get to the top of it, I won't go, oh my goodness, I spent my whole life and I got to the wrong level of success. Why was I, why was I climbing this? It didn't even matter. I wasted all my money for that. I spent all my time on that. I wasted all my influence on that. I argued over that. I know I'm so good, y'all. Your decisions today are creating the life tomorrow. What is the price you're willing to pay today for the life you want tomorrow? Do you want a great life or do you want to waste it for others to spend it? Men, do you want to see your kids play sports or would you rather spend it at work? Do you you want to spend it sleeping in on a Saturday or is nine o'clock late enough to sign up and go to the school here in September, our foundation school. Is it worth it? Yeah, well, I think I feel called tomorrow. I think God can use me, but you know, I just don't have the $600 and Saturday is just a lot of time. I just don't have that to invest. Great, don't invest it, but don't ask for the fruit of it. 
Man, I'd love to pray with someone. We'll go to the prayer class. We'll teach you. It's only four, four weeks, five weeks, four weeks. It's four weeks. You could even skip one. We'll forgive you. Can we miss one? One. See, what a graceful pastor. Cook says you can miss one. Oh, that's a four weeks. That's too much. But I'm great. Then don't pray for people. Don't complain though. When you stand before God and he says, did they try to help you? You better say yes. Because we tried to train you. We tried to, yeah, but I just get so nervous. Great, so you keep thinking about you and don't plant the seed that saves someone's life. Don't plant the seed that helps someone grow. Because, oh, it's just so about me and I'm so nervous. No, 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 no. Do what it takes today to become the person you've been dreaming of tomorrow. Plant the seed. Do the work. Save the money. Forgive the person. Let it go. Make the decision today. Is it hard? Yeah. Is it painful? Maybe. Is it worth it? Yes. Yes. Draw a line and live the life that you were created to live. Redeem. Redeem the time. Redeem your time. Let's all close our eyes and bow our heads.